a little bit, but first of all, back to the football, to the other derby. Martin Lipton, good morning to you. Good morning. We'll get stuck into the other derby in just a couple of moments' time, but I want to ask Is you... Is there another game this weekend? Yeah, I know, we've had, we've had, we were just talking about the other derby, and then somebody texted in to say they're looking forward to the chat about the big derby, which, uh, you know. Uh, England, before we get into that, Martin, if you don't mind, uh, we've asked you a lot about Gareth Southgate on this show, um, and you've a long and stated uh, affiliation, and I think it's fair enough to say affection... Uh, for the man, very just, yeah, very just. Quite, I, go ahead, yeah. So I was just saying, I think it was a, it was an interesting game on on Monday, uh, in that they play. It, it was a bit cautious. I thought the first 40, 35 minutes, and England had a very good spell before half time. Sterling really should have scored, and they could have been one or two up. Uh, then the goal hurt them, and it, they fifteen minutes they were a shambles. They really were a mess, and I thought Germany were going to win two or three or four at that point. It looked horrible. And as soon as England got one goal back, they became a very different team. Deservedly went back in front and played really well. And then the goalkeepers thrown one in. But the mood at Wembley, which might have been starting to get slightly nervous, even perhaps uh, mutinous, ended anything but that. It was a very positive feel from the fans at the end of the game that they were very confident, much more so than they had been um, at the start of play. Can I ask you about the like the the biggest one of the biggest accusations levelled against Southgate at the minute is in relation to Harry Maguire, and it's not really a conversation about whether uh, you know uh, I or you feel that Harry Maguire should start, but it's Southgate's management of the situation almost, and almost by his own admission, listen to him afterwards, he was talking about Maguire lacking confidence, needs game time, which of course he won't get. You suspect between uh, now and, and World Cup time uh, comes around. Your thoughts on? on that specific uh, thing, because people would say he should drop Maguire, get him out of the firing line, better for Maguire, better for England, better for Southgate. I think it's very hard to keep Maguire in the team at the moment, the way he's playing, uh, unless he gets some football and shows more confidence. But I would say that United have got, I think, 13 matches between now and the World Cup. By the very nature of of football, he's going to play some football. They can't pick the same team every game because they're going to end up with injuries and everything else. So he is going to get some football. Whether that's enough for him to regain his confidence is another matter altogether. There's no question that whatever happens, he'll be in the squad um, because, A, he's a player that um, Southgate likes. He's also got experience and he's played well in tournaments in the past, even in the Euros, if you remember. He wasn't in great form going in when he played which was after the first game which he missed through injury, he was actually really good. So there's that part of it. But I have to say that the danger I felt on uh, on Monday night was when he made the first mistake, or in fact the first two mistakes for the first goal, he's then gone trying to chase um, a degree of... Uh, I wouldn't say retribution, that's not the right word, but a, a, you know, a, a chance to put his get, get the story straight, to get himself back uh, as the hero of the hour. And in fact, that actually made him even worse because he then gets caught in possession in a position he should never be for the second goal. So there is that that danger that he ends up trying too hard to justify his place in the squad when he's not confident and therefore makes more mistakes. The one thing I have to say is, who else plays left side centre-half in the three? There's the issue. Mm. But surely from Southgate's point of view, you're, you're looking at a player devoid of confidence like you've just had to look at any game he's played over the last year, even... You know his demeanour is uh, suggests a player who's low on confidence. Is it? Is it? Despite what you've just said, and obviously it's Southgate's job to come up with an alternative. Has it been a mistake for him to stick by Maguire? I think he believes in playing a player into full. One of the things you've got to remember is that he was in that England squad in '96, uh, where the talk all the way up to the tournament was, "Why are we persisting with this centre forward who doesn't score goals?" And Venables, for whom. Gareth has an awful lot of time, a great deal of time, always said, no, I trust this man to come good. And when it mattered, Alan Shearer came good. And I think whilst that's not uh, at the forefront of Gareth Southgate's mind, that's always in his mind. He remembers that. He remembers the value of faith and loyalty to key players and how it works in tournaments if you show that to them. So I think that's a, a factor that can't be ignored. Um, let's talk about the game this weekend. It wasn't that long ago, uh, Martin, that we'd sort of been mourning the passing of the North London derby. Not necessarily in a competitive sense, because it's generally been that, but just in the overall relevance, I guess, to the title race. But suddenly, two teams at the top end, top players, good starts to the season. How long, uh, in your view, has it been since we've had a North London derby of this significance? 
of relevance. Well, I suppose you could argue the one last season was even more significant because it was all or nothing and fifty million pounds on the for on, for the top the, four the though. Pop. I mean, yeah. in terms but of the, for the title top race, well, Spurs yeah. have never been a title contender realistically, apart from one or two years under Pochettino. At which point, Arsenal weren't. It was that sort of period where the two teams were going, where, where, where Spurs were overtaking Arsenal. Uh, I mean, sixteen, seventeen. I think you could argue where. Um, so 15-16 rather the Leicester year, where obviously Arsenal were the only team who beat Leicester twice that season, but Leicester won the title. Um, and in that season, they were both in the top three at the end of the season. So you could argue there is a parallel there. But you never thought at, at any time in those two matches between them that they were either of them were going to win the title. It was they ended up in that position almost by default. Um, and, and Leicester, as we know, won the league. So before that, you're going back to, well, well before the advent of the Premier League, in truth. And how do you see Arsenal setting up? Because at the moment, it's looking like maybe six or seven players are going to be injured. They've they've started so well, but it looks like there's going to be a lot of changes maybe in the side. The one question you have about Arsenal this season, and I've got to be honest, you know, as a Spurs supporter, I've never hidden that. I think Arsenal have been the most impressive team this season. I think they've been absolutely excellent. And the one game they dropped at United, is I, I think they should have won. They were the better team and they just lost their heads when they got back to 1-1. I thought they were terrific. But the one caveat there's always been looking at them is how many players have they got outside the first 13-14 that you'd want in the team? Um, there is a question about the the strength of the, of the depth of the squad. Well, we're going to see that answered at midday or 1 o'clock tomorrow morning because that will be... Oh, tomorrow afternoon, rather. Because this will be potentially a test of that squad depth. Um, and only Mikel Arteta really knows what he's got in that squad, whether he has the depth. Mm. If you're asking me to, to judge, and this will obviously be the prequel to a 4 0 Arsenal win, I think that they haven't got sufficient depth to manta- maintain a challenge because in this season of all seasons, there's going to be more stress, more strain, more injury on players than ever before. You know, they've got nine matches just next month. They come back after a World Cup, which in itself is going to be strange with players flip, going to the World Cup. Others sat at home for six weeks not playing. And then they'll have to play at Arsenal's case, 24 league games between Boxing Day and the end of the season, plus the domestic cups, plus the Europa League, in which I think they'll go quite deep. So, you know, the demands on the, on the squad are going to be sh- deeper than ever. And that may prove, I think, probably will prove, to be Arsenal's undoing in the final analysis in terms of them maintaining a title challenge. But then again, I don't think anyone actually is going to t- challenge Manchester City by the end of the season because they're going to walk away with it. So there you go. It does feel like every conversation about the Premier League is predicated on the fact that it's everybody bar City almost. I know. Yeah, we can, if we can hamstring them or <laughs> fan them or something, but that, that, I don't think that's really allowed. <laughs> When you're looking at international duty as well, and maybe I'm going off topic a little bit, but like Arsenal have about three or four players that really are at international duty. So what would you rather as as a manager, as a club manager, if you're Arteta, like, do you want them going and play in, in, at international level and maybe not having the best of times of it? Or do you want them back at home within the group? Um, you know, Or do you want that game time? I often wonder where, what would they actually rather see them doing well and pushing on or... Uh, would they rather them back a base? If they're going to go with their cl- national teams, the managers want them to A, play, mm. and B, come back in. Actually, it's A, come back uninjured, B, yeah. play well, uh, not play poorly. Uh, but the preferred option for any manager would be none of them get selected. Not at this stage <laughs> of the season. You know, they just want them to be in, in, the, in the fold, working, training. This could have been, you know, a, a two-week training block rather than a very disrupted two-day training block is what you end mm-hmm. up off. But actually, it's not too bad because it was Monday matches, but that was just for the England players. There was others who didn't come back till Wednesday uh, or even Thursday if there was some sort of far-away far players coming, coming back. So they haven't had the preparation time that they would have done. And obviously, the last two or three days before a game are all about preparation, about tactics, about tinkering, mm-hmm. about what you're going to try and do on the Saturday. How uh, I was interested in your comments about Arsenal earlier on. How impressed um, have you been with them 
Martin, like certainly one of the tempting angles to go on with this uh, preview of the game is that you know there's revenge in the air after the run into last season and uh, you know the way it fell for Arsenal. But they're actually a really different team because of some of the players they brought in and the likes of Saliba has come back in the pitch and has uh, sort of like taken the world off its hinges in some ways. How impressed have you been um, with them? Well, as I said, I think they've been standout teams so far this season. They've been terrific. Uh, you could look at the fixtures they've had and say, oh, well, they should win them. It doesn't matter whether they should win them. They have won them. And they played really well. And they played with a panache and a certainty and a conviction and a dominance that we haven't seen from an Arsenal team in a very long time. And I, I have been uh, really impressed. I, I'm a massive fan of Bakayo Saka. I think he's a fabulous player. Uh, and I would do anything to get him in my England team. Uh, I, I don't care who I have to leave out apart from Kane, who you can't really leave out. But I want, I want Saka in my England team. I think Odegaard has been excellent for them this season, and they missed him in the last game and still still won. Saliba, as you say. I, I think when you end up playing Ben White out of position, that tells you how well the centre-halves have played, because he obviously wants Ben White in the team, and he's playing him at right-back. Now, it may be because of injury to Tommy Yasu, but even so, White's played there. Ramsdale has been solid. Miss, yeah, the injury was interesting because they were very keen on... Um, on the, the the Ukrainian boy, they got from they yeah. got from City, but he had a few knocks. And then Tierney came in and he got an injury, so we don't know mm. who's going to be fit enough to play left back. They wouldn't really want to play Xhaka at left back. Uh, talking of whom, he has led by example, hasn't he? He's been 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 excellent as well. They haven't had a weak link this season. That's the truth. They've been they've been really good, uh, and you're allowed to say that. I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with praising the team that plays well. And from a Spurs point of view then, what do you think? Um, I suppose at the moment it's been defensively at times. There's been questions, but they're scoring goals. They're scoring a lot of goals. I think they've scored the most behind City so far this season. Yeah, they haven't conceded too many either. I don't know how. I mean, the Leicester game, they were an absolute shambles at the back and still won 6-2. Uh, the interesting thing, that a lot of Spurs fans are very keen on in playing three in midfield. Uh, and they looked to the, what happened when Bissouma came on against Leicester and said they gave them shape and definition. They were quicker on the ball. They had more penetration. Of course, it means you have to play one fewer attacking player. Uh, and a lot of fans say, well, why don't they play uh, Kulisewski at right wing back? Now, you're not going to do that away at Arsenal in any occasion, I don't think, because you want the stability that Royale, who why he doesn't offer much on the ball, he offers quite a lot off the ball and defensively he's quite sound. But uh, Kulisewski may be injured in any event, having come back from Sweden with a bit of a knock. Uh, so he has to leave one out. I, if he plays three in midfield, he's got to leave Richarlison or Son out. Probably Richarlison, because Son, when he scored and came on and, and did so well against Leicester, looked like Son again. You can't leave out Kane. Um, but yeah, I think they haven't been great, but they have been successful. And when you've got strikers who can score goals, that buys you a bit, doesn't it? It allows you to not be quite as flowing flowing and fluent as you might want to be if you're winning games and they've done that thus far this is a real test but they had a test against Chelsea which they didn't deserve to pass and did with the late equaliser because they should have lost that game there's no doubt about it that was their poorest performance I think of the season but they found a way to to steal a point um they weren't great at West Ham although they were one one, one up and they they got away with a point the other games they've won Winning is a brilliant thing. I'm obviously the exception there is sport in Lisbon where they collapse in the in injury time. But as a as a rule this season, that they have found a way without playing particularly well. Now you do think looking at the collection of players in in Conte's squad that actually they might start playing at some point, and if they do that, then they're going to be really good. Mm. Not good enough to challenge City, but certainly top three. Um, a couple of things I wanted to ask you before we wrap uh, one by Tom, one story by Tom Barkley in your own paper this morning in The Sun Antonio Content uh, and the headline writers are on their, uh, on their corn this morning happy Italian could sign now or in the last day of the season Juve linked disrespectful as he plots long Spurs stay so he's ready to sign a new contract according to uh, Tom Barkley there and uh, nothing like a bit of contract talk to focus the minds and um, you know have everybody have the perception at least that Antonio Conte is the man they want um, and it looks like he's going to be around for the foreseeable future. Does that leave uh, Spurs fans in a happy position? I think a lot of fans will be very keen to see him sign. Look, there are two people's signatures they want on pieces of paper, and one is Antonio Conte, the other is Harry Kane, uh, and that would give certainty and give them two years. With with Conte, look, it's no surprise that when Juventus are in trouble, he's linked with a return to Juventus. You've got to remember, of course, he fell out with uh, Andrea Agnelli, uh, and a lot of the 
anti Juventus, get Conte back, talk in Italy, is because uh, quite a lot of the media don't like Agnelli and they want Agnelli out of Juventus. And of course, it's the family firm. Uh, you know, it, it is Agnelli and Fiat and Juventus. We know that. Um, so that's unlikely. And also, uh, you know, Max Levy is having a tough time. And there is a danger that Juve might, well, like looking, they won't be in the top four this season. And then who knows what happens in terms of the, the hierarchy at that club. So Conte won't be unhappy at being in demand. Whether we want to go back to Juve under the current ownership is less, less clear, I think it's fair to say. Daniel Levy knows that if he lets Conte go, he'll be criticised. Um, he doesn't want to do that. And you can see that there's something building at Tottenham. But also the history of, of Antonio Conte is, let's be honest, nothing lasts for too long. It's not in his nature. Mm. You know, he develops jitterbug and wanderlust after a couple, two, three years anywhere because that's what he does. And it's not being critical. It's the sort of manager he is. He doesn't believe in comfort, actually. I think he feels that he has to feel uncomfortable. And he also, as we've seen, does like to promote a little bit of, of chaos and controversy within a club. It's, you know, he, did it. he won at Chelsea, and the first thing he did was upset the apple cart. Um, and he went the following season. And, mm. you know, that's what he does. But at the moment, I think he's quite happy. The fact that he's got his fellow countryman in Peritici as his sporting director appears to be uh, a massive benefit in that he's got someone he can actually sound off to and discuss and who can get things done for him in the next door office. He's I... not had that uh, at Chelsea, for example. So I think that's a, that's a positive, but it's a strange old, he's a strange old fish and it's a strange old game. I must say, I've also enjoyed the uh, story because ultimately it doesn't matter about uh, Nike making eyes at Erling Haaland across the room in a way that like might affect uh, Harry Kane's boot deal. Um, it's been a fantastic uh, distraction. It's a really juicy story that I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to following over the next while. Give us your prediction here, Martin. What's the um, uh, brief, if you can? What's the outcome? If you offered me a one-all draw, I'd take it. Uh, and I hate the match. I'd rather know the result and not watch a ball kicked. I just <laughs> loathe it. I, I never, ever have enjoyed it. Whatever the score, I never enjoy it. Or oh, if they're three up with five minutes to go, I can sort of enjoy it. Spurs don't win at Arsenal. I haven't won at Arsenal since, 19, since 2010. Mm. Um, I can't see that changing. But mm. I would. I think, I think both sides would probably walk away with a one all relatively satisfied. Mm. It's just too tense. Is that the, is that the point? Yeah, I just, it's, it's 50 years of angst that just flows through <laughs> me 55 years in my case it's horrible i've never ever liked it it's the one game of the season i don't want to watch it's... i'm actually going to fulham tomorrow afternoon so that'd be fine i only have to, only have to watch half of it <laughs> well it's normally the point of the conversation where i tell you to enjoy the game but i might uh, i might forgo that no, this morning never <laughs> thanks million cheers bye-bye thanks a lot martin lipton on the line there head of the uh, north london